Uh, Jordan, can you tell us some about your work, your current projects, and uh, what your company offers? Sure, my company is in Alton Productions, mm -hmm. and we produce what we think is spiritually and intellectually edifying videos and films, and worked with Father Antoine on, on three different projects. But right now, I'm working on a project on the church in Cuba, uh, co-production with EWTN, and also another project on uh, Cuban dissidents, uh, pro-life workers in Cuba who are being imprisoned for their beliefs, people who are fighting for for human rights and freedom there. Um, those are some of the projects we're working on. So. And in your own personal story, the pro-life witness is factored in powerfully, hasn't it? Yeah, I, I, my brother and I have an identical twin brother who is uh, a convert as well to the faith, and we both pretty much came through the pro-life movement. We uh, had people around us who were very, very pro-life and very devout Catholics, and they were a good representation of the church. Uh, and we, I really respected, when I looked at the Catholic Church, and I said, wow, they've been consistent on these moral issues and spiritual issues throughout throughout time, and I said, "Wow, you know, if, if I'm going to be a Christian, I'm, I'm going to be Catholic because mm -hmm. I think really that's where the fullness of the truth is." Um, and eventually, of course, I became Catholic. And what drew you to the story of the Church in Cuba and its persecution? Well, actually, one of the priests on our expedition mm -hmm. is, is a priest from Camagüey. It's in the middle of the island of Cuba, and um, he and I struck up a friendship, and we continue to communicate through the years. He actually came to, to Washington, D.C. to visit, and he talked a lot about the persecuted church and just uh, the lack of freedoms that they have in Cuba, and, um, and, and it kind of presented the idea of, of doing a documentary on that subject, and the more I researched it, the more I realized, wow, these are, there are many people there and of, of deep faith, Catholic, Catholics and Protestants, who are, are, are fighting for, for things that we take for granted, as well as fighting for, for example, the right to life, and are being put in jail. Uh, Dr. Oscar Elias Bissett is one individual who's a pro-life doctor, put in jail for 25 years for his beliefs, and um, they're only 90 miles away from our from our country. And I think that um, kind of like what you were saying with with people, if they don't see it, they don't they don't know about it. It's out of sight, out of mind. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to present that to non-Cubans, the reality of, of of Cuba and those people who are fighting for the things that that we hold to be important and true. Now, is this going to be something that's going to be tough to get distributed here in the States? Uh, I think so, but... Uh, you know, any obstacles to that sort of approach, that's going to rattle some cages, isn't it? It will, but I, I think the individuals that you know, we're focusing on are very charismatic mm -hmm. and um, very intelligent, and they're a good representation of the Cuban people. And so far, we've gotten a really good response, not only from, from Cuban, Cuban Americans, but also just from people like you and me who haven't heard these stories but are really brought in by, by, by those stories and by uh, the, the fight of the Cuban people. So are you going down to Cuba? You're, you're, I've you're been there twice, Okay, and once for three weeks and once for a week. And the Cuban government's okay with you being there doing this, or do no. they know? No, no, they don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, they probably do now. <laughs> no, they're, they're very much against any, anything that uh, would you know, Ex expose their uh, Corruption yeah, the reality and deception and situation uh, there for the people. It's on TV, but uh, well, if you need any bodyguards, uh, all right, I'm <laughs> I'll up keep for it in it. mind. Hurrah, yeah. <laughs> Father, will go to. <laughs> Do you want me to? <laughs> <laughs> beautiful mountains there, though. It's so. a beautiful country. Right, and actually, the priest Father Alberto that we know from Cuba, he yeah. he would lead young people into the mountains uh, in Cuba, and I just suggest that everybody keep the church in Cuba in their prayers because. They suffer greatly, but they, the people there have a great faith. Well, and I think this is something, you know, we talk about the history of the church, we talk about the lives of the saints, the persecution, the martyrs, and so forth. I think it's, it is easy for us to, to kind of remove the, the fact that this is going on around us right now, that this kind of persecution and suffering, we may not experience it here in the United States to the degree that we're, you know, we hear of historically, but these things are happening in places like Cuba. I mean, that's not very far from the, from the U.S., if you consider the distance. And we've got Catholic brothers and sisters down there who are going through great suffering then. Right, and that's the one thing that they ask for more than anything else is spiritual solidarity. Mm. Um, they want people to know about them, to know about their fight, their struggle, and to send prayers their way, to, to pray for them, um, and to know that they exist and, and that they are brothers in, in the fight along with us. Right, right. Father, what would you say about the distractions that we have that, that kind of throw us off off the, the path of what, what, what Jordan's talking about. I mean, it, you know, th we have brothers and sisters that just want people to realize that we're here. Hello, we're here. What in America and you know civilized Western world? What is it that distracts us? You think mainly and keeps us from getting on that on that path? Well, I would allude to respond to your question to fa what Father Roberto uh, said during the, his homily 
with me, we were celebrating mass on the last day of our expedition since he joined us at that moment. And you can see in the video his homily to the people at Guadalupe Sanctuary, actually exactly at Tepeyac where Mary, uh, Our Lady of Guadalupe, appeared. And you can see in the video that Father Roberto uh, tells the people, the pilgrims, uh, with almost tears in the eyes, he becomes very emotional. He says, you, you in Mexico, you are free, you are free, but we in Cuba, we are defending our faith with our teeth. Don't get distracted, and so on. So for him, the suffering was a way to focus on the essential. Mm -hmm. And maybe if we don't suffer in our life, then we get distracted by a lot of things that we can afford to do because we don't suffer. And I was very moved by his homily because suffering makes us focus on our suffering and the way out, Jesus' suffering.